So we are um, uh, now providing a uh, consolidated set of data on a daily basis to brokers in Europe. Um, now we, um, we collect that data today from around 100 brokers. Um, we consolidate that data, we apply a whole range of quality checks, and then we publish that data back out to the market. Without that data, no one in Europe can actually effectively trade report. Um, so, so I think we are actually now instrumental in, in, in sort of um, ensuring that European markets um, can operate, which I think is probably the litmus test for sort of credibility, if you like. The data is um, collected from probably the top 100 brokers in Europe. Um, um, but that, that's, a, that's a long list, so actually you do get down to some smaller organisations as a result. The list is continuing to grow. I think um, we'll probably see it grow by another 30 or 40 over the next sort of uh, 12 months. Um, and by then I think we'll have pretty much complete coverage across the market. Um, and it's being used by um, organisations that trade significantly. It's being used by um, these things called APAs, so that's um, uh, trade reporting entities that actually have set up in business to allow others to trade report out to the market. They're using it um, and, and the work we've done actually is a collaboration with them. But we're also actually seeing a lot of interest in the buy side um, from people who want to understand where they can go in the market to actually trade effectively. So it helps with best execution, it helps with um, understanding where liquidity is um, and, and when you're doing your broker selection on a quarterly basis it's actually very helpful um, to understand who's trading what. I had a lot of expat customers and they were completely confused at how it works over here in Switzerland. They're not used to having to engage with brokers and agents like face to face like we're sitting here. They're just like, where is this online website where I can get an insurance? And it doesn't exist. So um, we think it's going to shift from actually the insurance company trying to be the center of, you know, this is the insurance, you have to come and talk with us, more to very context and custom tailored products which fit into specific situations in your life. So you're going to get the insurance then when you're actually confronted with one of these topics like getting a mortgage for example. So that's when most of the other banks in Europe try to sell insurance. We think there's going to be a shift from that I'm going to go to my insurance agent to buy the insurance to I'm buying a product and I'm, I need something that goes along with it. So we think that distribution is going to come away from that pushy sales approach and as I mentioned before to that pull uh, approach where we're pulling people onto the platform or, or replacing agents and brokers with technology that actually is faster and a lot more efficient than, than, a, than a manual process. We're, we're actually um, just launching, um, in fact, um, have our first couple of clients on our equity um, content set. Um, we have a full set of data in, in the futures and options space. Uh, and as we get towards the end of this year, we're looking to actually sort of kick off work around onboarding fixed income as well. Once we have that, we'll have a, a fairly complete set of data that allows us to uh, um, effectively meet the needs of a, a, of a buy-side firm more broadly, which will be um, excellent. So for us, um, the proposition that we, we build and, and, and um, provide to our customers is very structured data. Um, so it's, it's not the unstructured data that actually um, everybody is, is, is running AI algorithms on. Um, so what that means is when we actually sell to an organization, quite often they will be using it to help bring structure to the data sets that they have inside their organization. Now that can happen in a number of different ways, but that structure generally is very helpful in making artificial intelligence algorithms more effective because it allows you to bring data together in a much more consistent way across an organization and then you don't get the same sort of garbage in garbage out which is um, uh, an unfortunate tendency in some cases with, with, with AI. Um, so, so for us it, the AI isn't applied to the data we actually um, offer, it's actually the data we offer actually helps AI um, sort of make more sense, if you like. The insurance world is complicated. It's, as I mentioned, highly regulated. So actually taking our full end-to-end -end 
approach which we have with FLOT um, is, is quite a difficult task. It also depends on the innovation appetite of an insurance company and what we've noticed is that touching too many different um, departments of an insurance company with, with, with our value proposition obviously makes it a lot more complex. So it's, it's, it's more the fact that we're opening up new distribution channels for insurances and we're taking their products, their insurance product, and helping them distribute it into untapped sources of revenue. So basically we have two lines of business. One of them is, uh, is, a, is a B2B to C approach. So we're actually helping insurances to distribute their products directly on the market in different ways, through agents, directly to the consumer. And the other one is that we have tools in place to make their internal processes a lot more efficient. Um, so depending on the complexity of the project or the scope of the integration, obviously that you know, comes along with how difficult it is to integrate. And we have different um, POCs, proof of concepts out there in different variations of, you know, some of them are using our full tech stack, some of them are just using parts of it or testing parts of it. So yeah, to, to, to say having said that, insurance companies have very, very old IT setups usually. So um, obviously integration is a challenge, but with our CTO and the technology we're using, we have um, very fast solutions if the insurance is willing to open up and, and, and integrate.